it's become almost trendy to wait 30, 60, 120 minutes before having caffeine in the morning because very reputable people tell us that we should do that. And actually the basis of it makes so much sense that it creates a solid argument. But I don't think that people are out there saying this just to be malicious or grossly negligent and incorrect. I think it's been hard to sift through the data and understand sort of the biochemistry to really know whether or not this is the case. But most of the evidence is now suggesting that that isn't the case. You could potentially roll right out of bed and have caffeine, which is great for habitual coffee drinkers because it's a ritual. We like it. So there's a study that was published in the journal International Society of Sports Nutrition that had debunked a lot of different things, but they were looking at this one specifically. So let's break it down. After today's video, there's a 25% off discount link for Seed Symbiotic. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. Honestly, if you're trying to pull a pretty big lever to make a change in your life, I think starting with the gut health is a great place. So much of our fat loss and everything is just rooted in our metabolism and our gut and all of that. So Seed is interesting because they have a cool technology with that capsule inside of a capsule you hear me talk about all the time. But if you've been kind of waiting to try it, I think now might be your good chance because that's a 25% off discount link. So they have a lot of clinical trials behind them. They do their own studies. They pay for their own studies. And sometimes it doesn't even turn out the way they want them to, but they still publish them, which to me is really, really honest and integrity driven, which is what I appreciate about them. So that link down below is 25% off for their daily symbiotic, their DSO-1, which is their flagship symbiotic, prebiotic and probiotic in combination of one, one capsule. So that link down below, top line of the description underneath this video. So the big thing that people talk about the most is this cortisol thing. We get up in the morning and cortisol is already high in the morning. It's supposed to be high. That's what gets us going. It's like roll out of bed and you're ready to go. If cortisol doesn't elevate in the morning, that's problematic. If it starts to like spike later on, right? We want that spike. Now, this is all kind of coming from the world of cortisol being bad. Remember, cortisol in a normally functioning person is good. Like it is something that's also gonna stimulate fat loss. It encourages hormone sensitive lipase. It's all these things that we want to get up and going. We just don't want it chronically elevated. So the basis is don't add caffeine because it's going to increase cortisol on top of an already high cortisol spike. Wait for that cortisol to come down so you're not having a deleterious effect. Great basis couple serious flaws though. There was an interesting study that looked specifically at caffeine and cortisol and they found that caffeine did increase cortisol significantly, 30% spike in cortisol, big stress response, big cortisol spike, but they were testing them at 90, 120 plus minutes after waking. So it was having a cortisol spike regardless of whether it was in the morning or not. And a lot of people on the internet and even reputable scientists will say that caffeine is going to have an exacerbated cortisol impact first thing in the morning. It's going to increase it exponentially than it would if you had it later. However, the increase in cortisol seems to be about the same regardless. So that part's somewhat of a moot point. It doesn't matter. The cortisol spike is going to happen either way. Now, there is a reason why you may want to have caffeine a little bit later, but it's not what people are talking about. We're going to kind of end the video with that because there is legitimate context and I think there's a playbook that you can follow to just get the most out of your caffeine and get more fat loss and just effect out of it, right? But the other piece is this whole adenosine thing. So remember, adenosine is what builds up and makes you essentially feel tired, okay? And it comes as, it's the backbone of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Three phosphate molecules bound to an adenosine molecule. Okay, this goes through a cycle, obviously, where one phosphate molecule is cleaved off, and then eventually you're left with an adenosine molecule. These adenosine molecules build up in the brain and eventually create pressure to make you tired. When you have caffeine, you're blocking those receptors so that the tired molecules can't hit you. Eventually, caffeine wears off and you get a big rush of adenosine. Okay, so a lot of people suggest that if you wait for 30, 60 minutes in the morning, maybe even longer, adenosine levels stabilize. So your caffeine is not just going to be combating existing adenosine, but it's going to actually have a better effect and not have negative effects. Point is, is that the basis of that is scientifically incorrect and mechanistically incorrect. Because when you get up in the morning, if you know anything about circadian biology, there's rapid changes in our levels of adenosine. Adenosine remains somewhat built up during the sleeping hours in the morning, but the moment that we transition to being awake, those adenosine levels are like gone. It changes fast. 
So the caffeine is not going to impact any existing adenosine because there's barely any existing adenosine anyway. The adenosine builds up as the day goes on, which here's where we get to an interesting thing though. It's kind of funny that we have caffeine in the morning when the morning time, right, when we wake up is actually the least time that we would need caffeine. The reason we're probably groggy is not as a result of adenosine build built up. The reason we're probably groggy is because our brain waves haven't shifted over yet. Maybe we have adrenal issues, maybe whatever, but it's probably not from adenosine. As a matter of fact, adenosine is going to build up as the day goes on, which implies that caffeine is going to be more effective later in the day. So having caffeine first thing in the morning is definitely not deleterious. We have strong literature to suggest that it's perfectly fine. You could roll out of bed, you could have a pick line ready to go of coffee the moment your eyelids open. You could have it triggered, you could rig it with like a string and a paper clip, and then you could like rig it around your nightstand and you could make it so that you have, so the second you, your eyes open, now anyway, point is, you could do that, okay? It's not gonna be negative, but you have to ask yourself the question, does rolling out of bed in the morning and having a cup of joe do as much for you as if you were to preserve that caffeine and maybe say, you know what, I'm just gonna have it mid-morning when I'm actually a little bit tired. You're gonna get more effect, more performance effect. So here's a context. Let's say you work out at 10 a.m. in the morning, but you get up and you have a cup of coffee at 6 a.m. Okay, that's fine. Do you actually need that though? Or could you delay it until right before your workout? Because maybe you'll get even more of an effect more fat loss, more wakefulness during your workout if you had it later. So it has nothing to do with, hey, this is bad, it's messing up your circadian cues, and it has more to do with how much do you wanna get out of it. Another thing to note is that that cortisol spike with caffeine, it doesn't even matter because after a few days of taking caffeine in religiously or just habitually, you don't get the cortisol spike anymore. So it's a moot point anyway. So the whole cortisol thing, that just is off the table. So when you do take some time off of caffeine, however, Literature suggests it only takes five days before the cortisol spike would come back with caffeine. And I don't look at cortisol as bad. I look at cortisol as a sort of a barometer for, hey, how much fat loss am I potentially getting out of this? So it's almost like, hey, every once in a while, just take five days off and then restart and maybe you'll get even more fat loss benefit. Because there was another arm of this entire like review that looked at like habitual coffee utilization or caffeine. Basically it found that like you don't really lose performance effect of caffeine, but it does kind of happen gradually. So as long as you maybe occasionally take some time off and then come back with caffeine, it could work really well. So just be like selective. Like, do I need caffeine today? Or could I actually just have decaf and enjoy the ritual and give my body a little bit of a break so that I potentially get more effectiveness. But at the end of the day, the whole waiting in the morning thing, don't worry about it. I'll see you tomorrow.